Round seven, 2003, we played in the grand final the year before and leading coming into that game were three and three. So I think we were under a little bit of media pressure, I suppose, through, you know, we were one of the favourites to sort of push quite deep into September. Travelling to Footy Park was never, it was never ever a good place to go. And you never felt like you were guaranteed a victory there. And this was a pretty handy Adelaide team. You know, you had Mark Rusciuto, Ben Hart, guys like that. They'd grabbed Wayne Carey that year, controversially. We were starting to get a good reputation of playing really well um, interstate. You know, when we, when we went over, we were galvanised as a team and uh, we really gelled. Always a lot of night games as well. And that's one thing I thought we did well during that period was night games, ball on the deck. Um, pressure and intensity, uh, we found a way to get it done and get the ball forward. My most consistent year, that's for sure, it was, it was a year of just um, you know, contributing every week, either on the scoreboard or, or in some aspect of the game, which was, was quite pleasing. I think I built up to that year, my, the year before, I was kicking 50 goals as well, 50 plus goals, so it was a combination of getting a little bit older and, and um, getting used to you know, uh, playing on uh, bigger guys. and and growing into my body a little bit more and confidence, I think, which is a huge part in football, knowing that you, you know, you do belong out there. There was a bit of news going around that, you know, Kerry's 250th game, so the celebration there, um, and he had, had a really good start to the game. I think he kicked a couple off the ground, uh, ground early, so, and they got off to a flyer. I remember Adelaide sort of got off to a really good start in the first quarter and were quite, in, quite a fair bit in front at quarter time and basically just led throughout the game and, we just started sort of pegging them back from each each quarter. We just sort of started making a little bit of uh, room on them. Margin 25 to give Collingwood a good start to the second quarter, and he does. We had a really strong second quarter, and we're back within a couple of goals at half time. Similar level at three quarter time. We actually hit the front in the last quarter, and then they hit the front again. So it was one of those seesawing knife edge contests that could go. Either way, that game, the intensity and the pressure around the football and the crowd was one of the highest um, you know I've ever been involved in. It was just a, it was just no time, you know, to, to, to think or you had very little space to move in. It was always a good sign, especially in those interstate games early when you you got on a roll and you could take the um, the noise from the crowd, the intensity from the crowd out of the game. But on that particular occasion, we were, we were down. We had no chance to win. You well, it didn't look like we were going to win three or four goals down early in the last quarter. Yeah, the crowd was extremely noisy. Herculean task facing Collingwood now. Probably easy when you're interstate to think that, you know, this game's nearly done with, um, considering the noise that's coming from the crowd. But we were a team back then that faced with any adversity, we just kept grinding and grinding and grinding, and that's what we did. With not long to go, um, the clock was probably at 30 minute mark, 31 minute mark, and there was a stoppage out in the outer wing. Scrimmage after scrimmage after scrimmage, and the man that picks it up is uh, Buck. And they do Buckley, long ball, Tarrant! 30 metres out. Oh. As a forward, you know, when you're growing up, you're always thinking, you know, you're having that shot at goal going, think, the siren's gone, the opportunity to be the match winner and the um, the person who saves a day and you're doing that as a kid and when it actually comes time to, to do it at an AFL level 30 40,000 Crows fans yelling um, you've got you know the pressure of kicking the goal to win this game well, great you've got it good luck <laughs> that's about all you can say um, there's not too many boys that get the opportunity to finish the goal after a game I don't think I was nervous I think it was more of a, how am I going to get this um, through? Because, I mean, it, was, it wasn't a tough kick in terms of angle. It was, you know, probably, um, you know, a 30, 40 metre kick. I think I was just so focused on, on the goal that, and my routine and sort of just, you know, following through that I, I can't remember any outside noise. On Chris Tarrant's kick. It is a... I don't think you can describe it. You really can't. It's just a. It is just a, It's an incredible feeling. I'm, I'm assuming it's a. Um, you know, it's as an individual moment. I can't think of anything better um, other than sort of 
playing in the Premiership, winning the Grand Final, as an individual, um, where, where you, everyone's put in such hard work over, over the total um, time of the game that it's up to you to sort of finish off the, everyone's hard work. And I think to be, able, to be able to do that and to share it with everyone, yeah, it's amazing, it really is. You know, to have a win over, over there is fantastic. You know, the atmosphere is awesome. You get back in the room, you actually sing the song with a bit more gusto. Um, because you probably, you know, you, you're, not, you're not supposed to win interstate. You're not supposed to come to their hometown, their fortress, and, and get away with a win. But we knew that we, we could because of, the, um, because of what we did going into state games.